an astonishing number of Honda Jazz owners buy another, and the third generation version we're looking at here aims to keep them loyal. But the Japanese brand also needs to attract new converts to its clever little Super Mini, something that will be easier to do with this Mark III model thanks to its smarter looks, better driving experience and unrivalled practicality. For very good reasons, this is the Super Mini that industry insiders most commonly recommend. The Honda Jazz has always offered something rather different to Super Mini buyers. You don't get a vast choice of engines or sporty handling, but what is provided is arguably more useful. The biggest and cleverest cabin in the class and a thoroughly engaging ownership experience. Time to see whether this third generation version can continue to offer just that. It's got quite an act to follow. Previous versions of this global car, also known as the Fit in some markets, have carried off more than 30 international awards and over 5 million units have been sold worldwide since the first generation model was initially launched in 2001. Since then, manufacturing plants have been established in seven different countries and across the globe, this car's uniquely versatile and reliable quality ownership proposition has earned it the kind of customer loyalty that other Super Mini makers would kill for. Some owners are now on their fourth or fifth Jazz and many will probably be willing to buy this latest version virtually sight unseen. The problem for Honda is that there aren't quite enough of these people. That, along with the ageing demographic of typical owners. Changing this isn't going to be easy, particularly given that at launch, this Mark III model was available with just a single 1.3-litre iVTEC petrol engine option, and this time around can't, well, in our market at least, offer a hybrid alternative for those in search of something more efficient. Still, there are plenty of positives to set against that, helped by the fact that everything's been redesigned this time around. Well, almost everything anyway. The brilliant magic seat system that made the cabin of earlier versions so superbly versatile has been retained and is now even more impressive as part of a significantly larger body shell that offers a longer wheelbase and so extra interior space. As a result, the Japanese brand is claiming that this Jazz redefines what a Super Mini can be. Honda tells us that it's tried to improve the driving experience too, with the global compact platform that enables this Mark III model to offer all that space, also stiffer and linked to a revised front suspension system that's supposed to enhance both ride and refinement. Sharper steering and an agile handling assist torque vectoring system should help this car to feel a little more nimble through the bends too. But will it all be enough? Time to put this car to the test. If proof were needed that a satisfying road-going experience need have little to do with ultimate power, then ordinary versions of this Jazz certainly provide it. First, let's start with what hasn't changed. The near-perfect driving position, the smooth, willing, revvy nature of the iVTEC variable valve timing petrol engine, and best of all, the brilliant, feelsome quality of the manual transmission that'll see you shifting just for the fun of it. Why can't other brands produce a gear change as good as this? There are now six speeds to play with and you'll get plenty of use out of them thanks to the characteristics of the single engine option now on offer. A 1.3 litre petrol power plant putting out 102 PS. There's no diesel option because Honda doesn't like offering diesel unless it absolutely has to. And no petrol electric hybrid variant either because this time around the importers just couldn't get the price of this version down low enough to make it viable. Let's focus then on the 1.3 litre engine that you have to have. Now, like many of Honda's iVTEC units, it has to be revved quite a lot if you're going to get all it's got. An attribute that is rather at odds with the way that typically more mature jazz owners like to drive. The modest pulling power on offer, 123 newton metres of torque, isn't all delivered until you thrash the thing all the way up to 5,000 RPM. To put that into perspective, the 1.2-litre TSI engine that you get in a rival Skoda Fabia or Volkswagen Polo develops everything from just 1,400 RPM. In other words, if you are to push along a bit in this car, you've got to adopt a somewhat um, 
different style of driving. Fortunately, pushing along a bit isn't uh, much of a priority for the typical jazz buyer, hence the priority Honda is placed here on the things that people of this kind do care about. Upgraded lighter suspension components and revised damper settings aim to improve the ride and have, although the worst tarmac imperfections can still unsettle the car. More successful have been the changes aimed at improving refinement with extra soundproofing, plus that revised suspension system and the car's stiffer new generation global compact platform, all combining to make this now one of the quieter super minis in the sector and therefore a better prospect than before for longer trips, providing these don't involve too much engine revving that is. If you choose to pay extra for the CVT automatic gearbox and you need to get somewhere quickly, then engine revving will come as part and parcel of your progress, often in an auto jazz without much notable impact on your overall speed, no matter how much you click up and down the steering wheel mounted paddles. This is one of those rubber belt driven auto boxes and like all transmissions of that type, it doesn't take kindly to being hurried, emitting the usual strained CVT whine under hard acceleration, despite Honda's efforts to improve things with a more natural multi-gear feel this time around. Around town, the whole setup is of course far more in its comfort zone and comes into its own, shifting smoothly and delivering considerably better levels of efficiency than the manual model can manage. Unless you really are urban bound though, we'd urge you to stick with a manual jazz model. Get used to the engine's characteristics and the whole package can actually feel reasonably responsive with usefully improved, uh, now sharper steering and plenty of grip through the corners thanks to the addition of an agile handling assist system, which is Honda's version of the kind of uh, torque vectoring setup that we're now increasingly seeing on many compact family cars. During tight cornering at speed, this imperceptibly breaks the wheel at the inside of a curve. Uh, when power is applied, the excess torque then flows to the outer wheel that can better use it. And this all helps to maximise traction and it makes the car steer through the bends precisely and, and also power out of them more quickly. As for performance, well, rest to 62 miles an hour occupies 11.2 seconds en route to 118 miles an hour. Though when replicating these statistics, you'd have to drive in a manner that typical jazz owners will probably frown upon. These people are really going to like the intelligent speed limiter system that's been included as standard beyond entry-level trim. Working in conjunction with a traffic sign recognition system, this setup knows what the prevailing speed limit is and limits your pace accordingly. So there's absolutely no chance of creeping past 30 miles an hour and getting zapped by a roadside camera. Fortunately, you can turn the limiter off, and to be completely honest, I have done quite often, because when it's activated, it is not weak in the face of bullying. If you persist long enough on the accelerator, the car will eventually release the system and give in to your mad, illegal desires, but only after a standoff period in which lights flash and warning chimes ring out in shrill protest. Other writers have speculated on a later version of this model that further expresses its dismay over such irresponsibility by hooking up with the car's internet-enabled infotainment touchscreen and instantly shaming you on social media. Such a development really wouldn't surprise me. This Mark III model Jazz focuses on sense and sensibility. No futuristic Civic style flourishes here. If you happen to be familiar with previous generation versions of this car, then first impressions will be that this Super Mini is slightly larger this time around and perhaps, well, just a little bit more grown up. That'll suit the target market. Across the grille and headlamps at the front, Honda's stylists have pursued the solid wing theme that's common throughout their current model range. Strong lines emerge from the bold X shape of the bumper and grille and then rise around the lower edge of the headlamps and over the bonnet, creating what the brand hopes is a secure, planted look. A side perspective reveals a 95mm increase in length over the design's predecessor, making this car easily as large as a Civic from the next class up would have been a decade ago. 
Here at least some effort has been made to give the starling a sense of purpose. This lower side sill crease provides the flanks with some shape and more prominently this waist height cut in swage line rises sharply from the front wheel arch in an attempt to inject a forward leaning purposeful in motion feel. At the rear, the angular lines continue, particularly with these cut-out corner bumper vents and around the stylized rear combination tail lamps. There's a near vertical rear window suggestive of practicality and a subtle roof spoiler suggestive of lifestyle sportiness. The combination of attributes that, like every other brand in the segment, Honda's aiming for here. Time to take a seat inside. Now we've always thought that Honda is very good at front of cabin design. Other manufacturers might deliver classy ambiences and higher quality materials, but in terms of driving comfort and ease of use, this Japanese brand seems to be more precisely tuned in than most when it comes to creating an at-the-wheel experience that feels just right from the moment you set off. And here too, you get that feeling. True, it's not the classiest interior you'll find in the segment, though there is a soft touch dashboard, you still get a few scratchy plastics here and there. More importantly though, this is one of the best designed interiors that you'll find, offering a sense of airy spaciousness thanks to big front quarter windows and a large windscreen that meets the roof panel a long way rearward. The tape measure backs up this uh, perception, um, revealing that in comparison to before, front seat folk have 30 millimetres more shoulder room and sit 20 millimetres further apart. It's not perfect, of course. Taller drivers might wish for a little extra rearward seat travel, and you might find on longer trips that those seats lack a bit of thigh support. There's enough adjustment here, though, for most drivers to quickly find a comfortable driving position, and that'll see the beautifully weighted gear stick fall ideally to hand. Through the three-spoke multifunction steering wheel, you're presented with a prominent speedometer that's deeply recessed into a silver bezel binnacle and flanked by two smaller circular gauges, the left one showing revs and the one on the right being a TFT screen that shows key driving data. Anything that this display can't tell you will be covered by a glance at this centre panel, angled towards the driver and incorporating the key addition to the interior of this third generation Jazz model, this 7-inch Honda Connect colour infotainment touchscreen. And provided you avoid entry-level trim, this Android-based setup is standard across the range, controlling stereo and informational function, um, dealing with the optional navigation system, and providing full internet browsing when you're stationary. Now, for that kind of use, this setup should feel just like your smartphone, um, thanks not only to familiar pinch, swipe and tap functionality, but also to a clever mirror link function that allows you to mirror your mobile handset that screen display and also to gain access to its applications. You can download your favourite apps onto the touchscreen via the Honda App Center. And in fact, one key app, Aha, will come preloaded with the system. This gives you access to thousands of stations of audio, spanning everything from music to news, uh, podcasts, audio books, plus social media and location-based services. The integrated interface should make finding everything from a Twitter account to weather updates so easy that, well, even I could manage to do it. And AHA also includes point of interest searches, helping users to locate things like nearby restaurants and hotels. It all works very well, our only issue being that the controls for this screen are very touch sensitive, as indeed are those on the climate control panel that you get just below the Honda Connect display on a top model like this one. Now, that makes some of the functions a bit trickier to activate on the move than conventional switches and buttons would be. You have to be ultra precise touching the on-screen icons, otherwise your uh, commands will go completely ignored. As for cabin practicality, well, that's not too bad. A large cup holder on the right of the wheel is convenient for the driver, but it blocks the air vent, so you might be better off um, using the two that are here under the centre console. You get reasonable sizing for the glove box and the door bins, and most notably, there's a centre box in the front armrest that's big enough to accommodate a tablet. Time to take a seat in the rear. The Jazz has always been the most spacious car in its class, and thanks to a 30mm wheelbase increase this time around, it still is. 
True, as with most super minis, you'd struggle to fit three adults across the back seat for any length of time, but two people will be more comfortable than they could expect to be in any other car in this segment. Now, this is thanks to a substantial 115mm increase in legroom, a 65mm increase in knee room, and a 20mm increase in shoulder room, all enough to give you near civic standards of back seat space. Plus, you get a reclining rear backrest that's a boon on longer trips. What really marks this Jazz apart from its contemporaries, though, is the packaging brilliance that continues to allow it to stand out, made possible by the way that the fuel tank has been positioned under the front seats to liberate the floor of the cabin and allow the seats to be folded into all sorts of permutations. Uh, let's take just one of them, the so-called refresh mode. People in the back, exhausted on a longer trip, would use this when there's no one in the front passenger seat. This setting, allowing that front seat back to be reclined into a flat position, meeting the rear seat base. The result is a creation of what Honda calls a couch that's 1,580 millimetres in length. <coughs> Perhaps, though, you're in need of greater practicality, specifically for the carriage of the kind of tall items that you normally wouldn't expect to be able to accommodate in a car like this. Maybe a small potted tree that you bought from the garden centre, or perhaps a bulky item of electrical equipment. Now that is when you use the Magic Seat Tall Mode, where the front of the rear seat base rises up and can be locked into a vertical position to leave a cargo height of uh, 1,280 millimetres from floor to ceiling, allowing the object in question to be loaded in behind the front seats. The other two Magic Seat settings relate to the more conventional cargo configurations that we're going to have a look at now. Raise the rear hatch and you'll note the wide cargo opening and low loading lip that pave the way towards a class-leadingly large 354-litre boot that's 17 litres bigger than that of the previous model. And this means that there's nearly 30 litres more room than you get from the Super Minis that otherwise offer most space in the class, Skoda's Fabia and Hyundai's i20. And it's a lot more than most other rivals in the sector can offer. You're looking at about 20% more room than you get in a Renault Clio or a Seat Ibiza and nearly 30% more than is offered by Segment leaders like Ford's Fiesta, Vauxhall's Corsa and Volkswagen's Polo. And to help make good use of this capacity, an optional cargo pack gives you a boot tray with dividers and also a storage box that sits beneath the rear parcel shelf. But let's say you need more room and you want to push forward the 60-40 split folding rear seats to, for example, uh, saw something like a bicycle. Now that's when you move into the Magic Seat Systems Utility Mode. And the first thing you notice with that is the ease of the folding process. Often with Super Minis, you have to mess around putting the seat bases forward before you can then drop a rear backrest and that sometimes has to have the rear head restraints detached too. Or if not that, you'll be stuck with a backrest that simply flops forward and doesn't give you a flat loading floor. Here though, you only have to release a simple lever mechanism and then push forward uh, and watch as the backrest and seat base retract together into the rear footwell in one quick fluid motion. That creates a 1,505mm long flat floor that's fully 80mm longer than it was in the previous generation Jazz. And a total capacity that measures in its 897 litres, 14 litres more than before. If you were able to load right up to the roof, the figure would increase to 1,312 litres. So, yes, you can store something as bulky as a bike and longer items too. If you're not using the front passenger seat, there's the option to recline it as part of the final Magic Seat long mode. Mode. With this done, items as long as 2,480 millimetres can be accommodated. That's 80 millimetres longer than before, which could be just enough for more adventurous members of the mature jazz customer fraternity to fit things like a pair of downhill skis or maybe even a small kayak. Yes, in a super mini. You would never have thought it possible. Honda Jazz pricing sits mainly in the £14,000 to £18,000 bracket based around a single five-door body style and a single one3 liter IVTIC petrol engine. There are no diesel options and this time around no petrol-electric hybrid option either. Still, at least that makes things simple. 
Mechanically, the only choice that Jazz buyers really have to make is whether to choose manual transmission or go for the optional CVT automatic gearbox that's offered for a £1,000 premium. Now, you might think that Honda is severely limiting itself by not offering a wider variation of Jazz derivatives, but that would be to slightly misunderstand the market. The vast majority of sales in the Super Mini segment go to five-door petrol models offering buyers around 100 PS. Arguably, by focusing all of its efforts in this area, this Japanese brand is being rather clever. Cleverness that could, though, be completely undone by unrealistic pricing, which is something that Honda has been guilty of in the past with its mainstream models. This time around, though, the company seems to have pitched this car about right. Yes, you can find plenty of feebly performing cheaper petrol super minis that'll cost you less. But if, to be fair to Honda, you limit your search to contenders with comparable power outputs, then you'd have to say that jazz pricing is there or thereabouts. A starting figure that slots easily under the £14,000 price point makes this car slightly more expensive than a rival Peugeot 208 1 litre PureTech 82, but most other comparable models seem to have been almost exactly price matched. So, you're looking at paying the same kind of money for this Honda as you'd have to find for 90 PS petrol powered rivals like Volkswagen's Corsa 1 litre i, Skoda's Fabio 1.2 TSI, and Renault's Clio 1.2 TCE. It's also the same kind of outlay that would be needed for a 1 litre PureTech 82 version of Citroën C3, say it's a Beetha in 1 litre Eco TSI 95 PS guys, or comparably performing 1.4 litre petrol versions of the Kia Rio or Hyundai i20. Other key rivals will actually cost you more. You'd need another £500 or so over the cost of this Honda to get yourself cars like a Mazda 2 in 1.5 litre 90 PS form, a Toyota's Yaris in 1.33 litre VVTi guys, or Ford's Fiesta in 1 litre T EcoBoost 100 PS trim. And a comparable Volkswagen Polo, the 1.2 litre TSI 90 PS model, will cost you nearly £1,000 more in five-door form. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a Honda Jazz that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous the Japanese brand has been with the standard spec. And time for the detail on that. Even entry-level S models come with LED daytime running lights, auto headlamps and wipers, electric mirrors, all-round power windows and a neat shark's fin roof antenna. Inside, you get Honda's clever Magic Seat system, along with a decent quality 180-watt four-speak DAB stereo setup, featuring an iPod-compatible USB jack and an aux in point, plus air conditioning, a Bluetooth phone connectivity, a multi-information display trip computer, driver's seat height adjustment, a reclining rear seat, a fold-flat front passenger seat, a multifunction steering wheel and cruise control with a speed limiter that will help preserve your licence through roadworks or urban areas. If you've decided on a Jazz but you want to treat yourself to something a bit nicer than S-level trim, then you've either the choice of finding the £1,100 premium Honda asks for its mid-range SE spec or finding a premium of just over £2,200 above S-level trim and going for the plushest EX variant that we're trying here. You'll need one of these plusher trim levels if you're to have a car fitted with the Honda Connect 7-inch colour infotainment touchscreen with its DAB tuner, internet radio access and USB connectivity. You also get app integration and a clever mirror link function that allows you to mirror your mobile handset screen onto the infotainment display. As a package, Honda Connect really completes the interior of this car and once you have it, you'll have the opportunity to specify the optional Garmin navigation system that's offered at a premium of just over £600. Other highlights of SE trim include 15-inch alloy wheels, front and rear parking sensors, heated power folding mirrors, an alarm and a package of safety items that I'll cover in a minute. Now, if you can push the boat out and get yourself top EX trim, the alloy wheels get larger 16-inch rims and there's rear privacy glass and front fog lights. Inside, there's a rear view camera, six speakers for the stereo, leather for the steering wheel and the gear knob and a smart keyless entry and start system. 
Whichever variant you choose, the standard spec will cover most of what you're going to need. But if you do want to go further, then your dealer will be very happy to tell you about the various option packs on offer. Now, we would want to look at the cargo pack, which gives you a boot tray with dividers and a storage box that sits beneath the rear parcel shelf. The tailored waterproof anti-slip boot tray might be useful too. Maybe something that you'd buy along with the optional dog guard. And we'd definitely like the 3D sound package that adds a compact digital sound processing unit to the car's sound system and just transforms the stereo clarity. For regular child transport, the tablet holders that clip onto the rear seat backs would also be a boon. Otherwise, the options are mainly aimed at aesthetic trimming and, to be frank, fairly unnecessary. You might like the aluminium sports pedals or the illumination pack with its glowing door sill finishers. And there's nothing wrong with the premium pack that gives you colour match side body trim, smart carpet mats and mud guards. But the front, rear and side mirror silver embellishment that you get in the design pack looks a bit unnecessary, while the sport pack, with its skirts and spoilers, in our view, makes this jazz look, well, rather silly. This really isn't that sort of car. On to safety, where the highlight standard fit feature across the range is Honda's City Brake Active system, an extra cost item on most rivals. It's there to scan the road ahead for potential collision hazards at speeds of under 20 miles an hour. If one's detected, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond, or you aren't able to, the car will automatically brake itself to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. And that builds on the usual features you'd now expect on a car of this kind. Uh, twin front side and curtain airbags, anti-whiplash head restraints, Isofix child seat fastenings, a tyre deflation warning system, and hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Plus, there's also the impressively strong basic rigidity of Honda's so-called ACE body structure, the advanced compatibility engineering approach that forms the foundation for excellent passive safety performance, enhancing occupant crash protection. What else? Well, there's stability control, of course, Honda's VSA, Vehicle Stability Assist System, plus the usual ABS braking setup with a brake assist feature to help in emergency stops that will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. AHA, Agile Handling Assist, increases cornering traction and an EDDB, Early Downshift During Braking System, automatically increases engine speed to provide engine braking in deceleration, downhill or cornering situations. There's also what Honda calls a fast off feature that maintains engine revs if you come off the throttle pedal too quickly. As you might say if you've uh, pulled out to overtake but you suddenly have to abandon the manoeuvre. The sort of scenario that might cause a skid on an icy morning. It's all very welcome. And this jazz goes further still. Providing you avoid entry-level trim, your car will also come fitted with a package of five other key features. You get a high-beam support system that automatically dips your headlights for you at night in the face of oncoming traffic. Plus, there's a forward collision warning system that monitors the distance and closing rate between you and the vehicle in front as you drive and warns you when you're getting too close. For peace of mind on longer journeys, there's also a lane departure warning system to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on a highway. And also a traffic sign recognition system that pictures road signs as you pass them and displays them for you on the dash. Now, this last named feature uh, drives what is arguably the cleverest element of this impressive safety package, the intelligent speed limiter. From the traffic sign recognition system, this setup knows what the prevailing speed limit is and it won't let you break it unless you persist on the throttle. Theoretically, it might make speeding tickets a thing of the past. Efficiency is an area where gains were needed in this third generation Jazz and sure enough, Honda has put a great deal of effort into improving things. 
the company's so-called Earth Dreams technology, bringing us a 1.3-litre iVTEC petrol engine that's as powerful as the previous 1.4-litre unit, yet more frugal than the previous 1.2-litre power plant. The problem for the Japanese brand is, though, that the old 1.2-litre model just wasn't especially frugal, not by current class standards anyway, which have risen substantially in recent years with the introduction of the kind of three-cylinder petrol turbo technology that Honda has chosen not to embrace here. Still, engineers on the Mark III model jazz development team have done what they could. You get a more slippery shape, uh, there's six rather than five speeds on the manual gearbox, and of course there's one of those stop-start systems to cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck in the lights or waiting at traffic. To improve its efficiency, this car's Euro 6 petrol power plant gets a higher compression ratio, lower levels of internal friction, uh, a more effective exhaust gas recirculation system and electronic operation for the variable timing control to optimise valve timing. So that drivers can play their part, an eco-assist function changes the backlight colour of the speedometer from white to green. In fuel-efficient driving, you'll be able to monitor via fuel efficiency readings recorded on the Honda Connect infotainment screen. The optional Garmin navigation system also helps out with the option of so-called eco-routing. The result of all this effort should see the CVT automatic version of this car return 61.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 106 grams per kilometre of CO2. Unfortunately, the figures managed by the manual transmission version most people actually buy aren't quite so good. 56.4 miles per gallon and 116 grams per kilometre. Bear in mind that all these readings apply to a car fitted with 15-inch wheels and will worsen slightly if you have a top variant like this one with 16-inch rims. Either way, though, you're not looking at class-leading efficiency here. To be fair to Honda, these figures would have been pretty good just a few years ago. And still today, they match older engines in this sector. The 1.33-litre VVT-i unit used by Toyota in its rival Yaris model, for example. Other comparably powerful 1.0-litre and 1.2-litre rivals, though, do do rather better. If I were a prospective Jazz buyer and set on the manual model, I really wouldn't worry too much about this. Honda residuals are likely to be far higher than those you get from a rival Fiesta, Corsa, Clio, Fabia or Ibiza should more than make up for the running cost difference. Previous Jazz models have managed to retain over half of their value after the usual three-year, 60,000-mile operating period, and this third-generation version should continue that trend. The three-year, 90,000-mile warranty is better than the package you get from many rivals, too. Insurance is rated at Group 13E for all variants. Ask almost any motoring expert to recommend the Super Mini that they would buy with their own money, and a large number will plump for this one. It isn't the feistiest car of its kind on a twisty road, but we'd trade that for this model's superb gearbox and long journeying refinement. At the end of the day, though, that isn't really why we'd suggest that so many Super Mini buyers might really like this Honda. No, for us, it's still the cleverness of the car's packaging that impresses most, with its neat magic seat flexibility and TARDIS-like cabin. It's true that some of the cabin materials could be plusher, but against that, uh, build quality is excellent and residual values unrivaled. It's also a pleasant surprise to find that this Jazz has been so competitively priced, that despite the fact that it's now one of the best equipped models in the segment. It's also one of the safest too. We applaud Honda for making the City Brake Active System standard and we reckon target owners will love the way that the intelligent speed limiter will keep them on the right side of the law. If you add all of this together, you begin to appreciate just why this car has such a dedicated following. Try one and you'll understand.